so here's everything that you need to know about the so-called Onyasanti altar, also called the Virgin and Child Enthroned by Giotto de Bandone. First of all, it's pronounced Giotto. And <clears throat> second of all, this painting was housed or is housed in the Uffizi Museum in Florence, right next to his teacher's painting. So some of the other things that are important about this, since he is a student of Cimabue, who was a late Gothic uh, sort of Byzantine-in-style painter, is that Giotto was discovered by Cimabue as he was tending some sheep outside of Florence, and Cimabue decided to make him his apprentice. From Cimabue, he basically learned all the conventions about how to organize um, a painting, how to charge for a painting, for instance, by the head, uh, meaning that each of the characters in the painting would have been uh, at a cost. He learned how um, the Madonna should look, what the proportions of the face should look like, how the body of, the, of people should look, and how to measure things. He also learned uh, how to use tempera paint, egg tempera, and how to make gold leaf, and how to lay a painting out. But he surpassed his teacher, and so one of the things that's important about the history or context about Giotto is that he is considered one of the first Renaissance painters. Now, <clears throat> some teachers, some professors, will refer to him as proto-Renaissance, which means just before the Renaissance. Some will refer to him as late Gothic, and they'll refer to his teacher, Cimabue, as late Gothic as well. And some people will just call him early Renaissance. In my opinion, he is early Renaissance because he started a new way of painting that is a rebirth of stuff that we haven't seen since ancient Rome, uh, since some of the frescoes even in Pompeii with, with the illusionism. So primarily, the most important first thing about Giotto is that he surpassed his teacher by creating more illusionistic and more realistic looking paintings, which means that we have to look at Giotto in terms of a formal analysis first, uh, meaning a physical description of the painting and what he did in his painting. In terms of its physical form, it follows the basic schema or plan that his teacher had established of using gold leaf for the background, painting a large altarpiece that would have been placed as a sort of dividing screen or at least a place where people could go and contemplate the Virgin and light candles in front of her and, and the Christ child. But <clears throat> he does some things that are very traditional by placing uh, the uh, Virgin and child on a throne. However, in this instance, if you look at the throne, it looks more three-dimensional, meaning it has some depth. It is still not in what we call one-point perspective, but it is using something called intuitive perspective, meaning that in one-point perspective, any kind of um, line that's supposed to be parallel, like the sides of a road, seems to converge at one point on the horizon line called a vanishing point. Giotto doesn't do that, so if you trace the lines out in his paintings, they're not going to go perfectly back to a vanishing point. However, he kind of understands that that should happen in some ways. He just doesn't know all the rules. So the way that he makes this throne look three-dimensional is he creates um, sort of diagonals that make sense, that seem to get smaller as, as they go towards the background. He also has some characters looking through the actual architecture of the uh, throne, and it kind of looks like a church in that way. Now, some of the other things that um, about Giotto that aid to this illusionism or how it looks real is that he actually starts using something, uh, he starts shading. Uh, and he's shading in a way that his teacher didn't shade. Basically, if you were to try to find where the light is coming from, you could see that there is almost like a light source hanging from the upper right-hand corner of the painting and it's creating shadows on the left-hand side of all the figures. And so you can see that this light and shadow sort of pulls all of the figures together, making them sort of all seem as if they're standing in the same place, in the same light, with the same light and shadow. Sometimes this is referred to in Italian as chiaroscuro, which just means light and shadow. And Giotto understands how light and shadow work and how shading can create volume. So if we look a little deeper into the, uh, the altarpiece, you'll see that the actual uh, 
throne is a sort of dome. Uh, what confuses the issue a little bit is if you look closer at the Madonna and Child and you look at uh, Mary's head, you'll see that she has a halo around it and it kind of confuses the fact that this is kind of like a half dome or a half apse. But <clears throat> nevertheless, there is shading in that dome along with some very Byzantine looking kind of decorations. The next thing that I want you to notice is that all the figures are shaded pretty accurately. Uh, if you look at their faces and you look at their bodies, you can actually see that, that there is light and shadow and that the drapery makes an awful lot of sense. It seems to define the forms and reveal the forms underneath. And if you look very closely at Mary and at the baby Jesus, you'll actually see that the cloth is almost semi-transparent and you can see the Virgin Mary's breasts and you can see the genitals on Jesus. And this is purposeful. Breasts are a symbol of charity and of motherhood. And the genitals on Jesus are often represented to show that he was a real person and, and chose not to become carnal or sexual. Okay, So we see this shading that makes a lot of sense on the figures. Now, we also see it in all of the other figures. Now, the next thing that makes it so realistic compared to the earlier traditions, for us it doesn't look realistic probably hardly at all, is that all the figures are looking at Mary in the center and uh, they're looking through the windows of the, of the uh, throne. They're also looking directly at her. The angels that are kneeling before her that are holding two vases are actually looking up at her. Now, <clears throat> if you were to compare this to his teacher, Chimabue, you would see that Chimabue had the angels looking all kinds of different directions. They're flanking um, the Virgin Mary, but they're not actually interacting with her. The closest we have to an interaction are some figures down uh, underneath the throne that are sort of looking up at her. But in Giotto's, every single figure is looking at her, and we also have different points of view of the head, from a profile view to a full frontal view to what's called a three-quarter view, in which you see sort of three-fourths of the face uh, and the nose slightly turned away from you, but you can also kind of see both eyes. Now, the reason why this is significant is Giotto looks like he's actually observing anatomy and reality and sort of working with that and trying to figure out how to shade drapery, how to shade heads, and also how to make the anatomy look more realistic. Now, where he departs from that and sticks with the old tradition is that he's using hieratic scale, meaning that the Virgin Mary is bigger than everyone else because she is literally bigger in terms of the religion. She and Jesus are giants compared to the adoring fans surrounding her. And that's just a way of emphasizing her importance. Now, the other thing that he does is if you look at the Virgin Mary's face, even though it looks kind of creepy and she looks like she kind of has buck teeth, uh, and she has cross eyes. He's showing a little bit of the hair, and it's this blonde hair, which would have been highly favorable in Italy, in Florence at that time period. The hands are actually much more realistic than we've seen before, and if you were to compare them against Chimabue's hands, you can see that Giotto almost seems as if he's really looking at hands to try to figure it out, although the Jesus child still has the same hands as his teacher. The sort of last thing that you need to pay attention to is how Giotto actually does almost what we call today faux finishes. Uh, he paints illusionistically things like uh, the tiles underneath and also the, um, the marble-like surface of the step that's leading up to the Virgin Mary. Now, in terms of iconography, there are some things that relate back to, to all these earlier uh, images of the virgin and child in throne. The most basic symbol that, that's going on here is the Virgin Mary is enthroned uh, on basically to show that she is sacred. The Christ child is seated on her lap and she is considered what's called the throne of wisdom where Jesus learned all of his earthly morals and wisdom. Okay. So that's a very important kind of iconography, and by making the figures and Mary look more realistic, what we are supposed to be convinced of is that Mary was a real person, and that there's some real emotional gesture. These people are really looking at her 
regarding her, that this is almost like an illusion of reality and you could walk into the painting and it would be real. There are a couple of other little things that are involved. For instance, I mentioned before that the breasts are a symbol of charity and the genitals on Jesus are a symbol of him being fully human. But we have the angels that we've seen before, and these angels are holding vases with white flowers in them, which represent um, basically the Virgin Mary's womb is a holy vessel. Therefore, when you see a vase or a vessel with white flowers coming out of it, it means that um, she is the source of this pure spirit, Jesus, that springs out of her womb. You also see some other things, crowns and other gifts that are being brought to them, and of course the, the throne itself. Other things that are symbolic or kind of important, besides the sort of gesture or the uh, emotional uh, positioning and, and the interaction of the figures, are the gold leaf, which is a very expensive thing, and then the colors used for the Virgin Mary's gown, blue is, is a royal color. So those are the most important things that you need to know about uh, the Virgin and Child Enthroned, or the Onyasanti Altar, and uh, I hope that this helps you.